Good morning and welcome to St Paul's. My name's Becky and I'm a curate here at St Paul's. And I am Alex and I'm the associate vicar here. And you're very welcome, whether this is the first time you're tuning in or whether you've been watching all the way through this year, and um, we're very, very welcome. And listen, today we've got a great um, service coming up. Uh, we've got an interview with Brad and Marie Bryant, who are going to be running our Alpha course. It starts next Wednesday evening, and so I caught up with them earlier in the week to find out about that. Uh, we've got uh, Becky, you are preaching, which is very exciting, and we're carrying on our sermon series uh, looking at the songs of ascent those psalms uh, towards the end of the book of psalms uh, as people went on pilgrimage and we're going to be thinking about pilgrimage ourselves um, and then of course great thanks to caroline who's going to be reading the bible and john who's going to be doing our prayers becky how's your week been yeah it's been been an all right week it's been it had a bit of variety i've been in the hospital a bit which um like most hospitals are feeling a bit of pressure at the moment, but I've had some yeah. great chances to pray with staff and patients. And I've now been kitted out with a set of scrubs, so I kind of have to make sure I wear my badge so they don't confuse me for a doctor. <laughs> um, but, um, but that's been good. And then I had IME training uh, this week as well, which is that uh, all the curates in their first year meet on Zoom, and we had some training on uh, on how to do funerals. So it's been a very, yeah, a week of variety. Oh my word, what a, what a combination of... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah, well, we've got we're doing homeschooling, so we've got three of ours at home. So that's um, that's been challenging. I've realised um, that God is very kind and not calling me to the teaching profession. I think I've got no <laughs> ability whatsoever. Jane's brilliant. I'm dreadful. Um, and then just been spending quite a bit of time with different people in the church, thinking about the future and, and where we're going over the next few months what God is calling us to and where he's calling us particularly as we go out into the community in ways in which we can all um, just shine for Jesus there so it's been a, it's been a great week actually that's really exciting to hear absolutely mm -hmm. well should we pray Becky? yeah let's pray yeah. oh father thank you for this time that we've got to spend with you and worshiping together even though online we just pray that you would still our hearts and you prepare us to meet with you today in our worship, in our Bible readings, as we hear your word opened up to us. Come and speak to us. In Jesus' name. Amen. You do great things. 
think the sun's I think the sun's getting ready to roll I feel the faith that is starting to rise I see the world on the edge of revival I think it's only a matter of time Let's do what only you can do Move what only you can move Even the impossible is possible for you I see a grave that is hollow of power I see a battle that's already won And I see a church on the verge of revival I see your kingdom has already come So do what only you It's possible for you Cause you can make the chains come loose You can tell the mountains move Even the impossible is possible for you Even the impossible is possible for you You said it You said it I see it You still do miracles There's power in Jesus' name All darkness defeated There's nothing stopping you, my God There's nothing stopping you You said it, I see it You still do miracles There's power in Jesus' name Do what only you can do. Move what only you can move. Even the impossible is possible for you. Cause you can make the chains come loose. You can tell the mountains move. Even the impossible is possible for you. Do what only you can do. So do what only you can do. Move what only you can. It's possible for you Cause you can make the chains come loose You can tell the mountains move Even the impossible is possible for you Cause even the impossible is possible for you Good morning. We're all pilgrims, each on our unique journey of faith. We can depend on God and he hears our prayers. So let us pray. A prayer for those who are finding lockdown and our COVID world stressful. Lord, please give us peace of mind as we deal with the stresses of life in our COVID world. We pray particularly for those experiencing anxiety and upset at this time. Lord, remind us that no matter what comes our way, you are there to help us when we open our hearts to you. Strengthen our desire to develop and grow in our faith and to spend time in your presence and walk in obedience in your word. Give us clarity and wisdom as we make decisions. Order our steps daily. We ask you to bless us in everything and in every way. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. 
We now pray for our care and medical services. Let us pray to Christ, who is the Master Physician, who cares for every part of us, and who cares for the carers. Let us pray. Father, we are so blessed to have such superb medical care in our country, particularly at this time. We pray for all who serve, particularly those who are working long, long hours. We thank you for them and pray for your strengthening of them. We pray for those receiving care and treatment. Bless our nurses, our doctors, our carers, all hospital staff and chaplains. Bless those who work in our laboratories, who drive our ambulances and other vehicles. Bless those delivering the national vaccination campaign and those volunteering. Christ, the Master Physician, surround our NHS and all carers with your care, we pray. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. As a church, we support Christian Aid. Christian Aid works with many refugees and families who have fled violence and hunger in countries suffering conflict. They need our continued help. Many families are now living in crowded refugee and displacement camps with little access to medical care, clean water or enough food, making them extremely vulnerable to coronavirus. And this is the reality for people living in tents and makeshift shelters without running water in places like Yemen, Syria, Somalia, South Sudan, Democratic Republic of Congo, Afghanistan and the Rohingya refugee camps in Bangladesh. As a church, we support Christian aid, so let us now pray the big Christian aid prayer for those in other countries. Love never fails. Even in the darkest moments, love gives hope. Love compels us to fight against coronavirus alongside our sisters and brothers living in poverty. Love compels us to stand together in prayer with our neighbours near and far. Love compels us to give and act as one. Now it is clear that our futures are bound together more tightly than ever before. As we pray in our individual homes, around the nation and around the world, we are united as one family. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. And now a concluding prayer by St Benedict. O gracious and holy Father, give us wisdom to perceive you, diligence to seek you, patience to wait for you, eyes to behold you, a heart to meditate upon you, and a life to proclaim you. Through the power of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Great. Well, listen, earlier this week, I had the chance to catch up with Brad and Marie Bryant. They're part of our church and they're going to be leading our Alpha group this coming Wednesday. Alpha's going to be a bit different this year. Obviously, we can't meet. We can't have amazing food together. Um, so let's hear from Brad and Marie about how Alpha is going to be different and a little bit more about what Alpha is. Hi, Brad and Marie. Great to see you guys. Hi. Well, Alex. <laughs> I don't know. welcome to our three minute interview. Uh, we're trying so hard to keep it to three minutes, but today I'm really glad to have you two on because, well, for reasons that will become apparent shortly. Um, now, listen, for, for people in the church who may not know who you are, um, do you want to tell us a little bit about you and the family and where you live and what you do? Sure. Well, uh, I'm Brad Bryant, and this is my wife, Marie. Um, and we've been coming to St. Paul's for what? 15 years? 16, I think. Six, right. 16 years okay. now. Uh, we've got three children. We've got Emma, who's 21 and um, at university, and Sarah, who's 20, also at university, and Dan, who's turning 19 on Saturday, and he's uh, also at university. All three are studying around the country. And we live in Newdigate, just outside of Dorking. And um, yeah, we 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 keep sheep now. We have <laughs> five sheep, and we're we're having a bit of fun with that. Um, we've got two dogs, three kids, five sheep. <laughs> and is everyone at home? With you? Is everyone at home at the moment? Uh, yes, 
they are everyone is at home uh, which is lovely you know yeah, considering the circumstances I'm, I'm really pleased to hear it um listen you are um you're superstars because i know for the last six years you've been leading alpha at st paul's church and um i know many of us know alpha we're, we're going to be doing it slightly differently this year Tell us just a little bit about what what is Alpha and and how is it going to if you sign up for it this year how is it going to be how's it going to work in in lockdown? Yeah, so we're we're pretty excited about Alpha. You know, you, usually we run it. You know, fairly fairly formulaic. We run it at the church, but this year we're running it online. And I think there's a lot of good things about doing that. It gives you a chance. Just you know the time slot you're going to be there. It's going to be one hour. Uh, you hear a really interesting, thought-provoking talk, and then in a really non-threatening way, you get to talk about some of the issues that are brought up during the course, and it could be anything. And folks have got a lot of questions mm -hmm. uh, about Alpha, you know, why are we here, all the things like that, and it gives us a chance to, to, to just talk in a small group about things that are on our heart or what we've uh, thought about during, during the video presentation, which is short and, and interesting. Yeah. The, the good thing is that you don't need a babysitter. You can just, <laughs> or, you know, you don't need to leave your house even. So during lockdown, this is perfect. You can just uh, join our meeting. We'll send a link out and um, we'd love to, to welcome you. You can do it in your pyjamas um, as well. So. <laughs> that sounds great. Uh, as long as you're appropriately dressed from about here. Yeah, from there, there. Uh, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's 7.30... Wednesday the 20th it begins I think isn't it yes um yeah. one thing that has really impressed me with you guys I, I love it about the two of you is how much you you love Alpha because you I, when we had the chat this year and said could you guys lead it you, I didn't have to drag you kicking and screaming to the laptop what is it about why, why do you love doing this because you've done this now for six years what is it about it that, that excites you and, and inspires you it, it just never gets old, Alex. It's it's so exciting. And I think the thing that, that I liked the most about it was two things. Firstly, when in your life do you get to sit down and really think about the things that matter? Why are we here? Why do bad things happen? The, the sort of really basic questions of life that you don't get to talk about. And here's a venue for you to, for once, you know, talk about this. You know, is there a God? What is it? Does it matter? You know, so these are these are the cool things that you get to talk about. The other thing that, that makes me excited about it is that you see people change uh, through the course. You know, honestly, sometimes there's been some folks that have come to the course first five weeks and then halfway through they walk in the door and you think, you've changed. You know, like you, you, look, you look lighter, you look happier, what it is. And then people, you know, have these revelations for themselves. And I think that's super exciting. You don't get a chance to do that in the world much anymore. I yeah. think that's cool. Yes, mm. that's very true. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, Marie? and I think you can come along as well, and it's a non, you know, judgmental environment. No question is a silly question. Mm. Everyone's in the same boat. Everyone's exploring, asking questions, and um, we'd just love to have you with us. Mm. And uh, you can try Alpha for one night. If you don't want to come back, you don't have to. Mm. You can just come along, see how you go. Um, watch the video, have a little bit of interaction with us, and and take it from there. Well, I think it's going to be a brilliant alpha. Um, I think you're going to have a blast. And um, for folks who are watching at home, um, really encourage you to come along. If you've heard it, you haven't tried it before, um, just such a great way. Everything that you guys said. Um, well, thank you so much for your time. Uh, we we love you guys, and uh, so grateful you're leading it. And uh, I uh, can't wait to see Thank how you. the first night goes.
never gonna leave, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let, never gonna let me down. is Psalm 121, a song of ascents. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When I spotted that I had been assigned Psalm 121 on the preaching rotor, I smiled because this psalm has been so significant for me over the last few months. It was requested the first time that I visited the COVID ward as a chaplain in the hospital. And at the time I didn't have a Bible on me, but I managed to find it on a phone. And as I read this psalm out loud in this ward, where there had been anxiety, I sensed God's presence and peace. Afterwards, as I was reflecting on it, and particularly my lack of a Bible when I needed it, I felt God prompting me to learn this psalm off by heart. Now, I don't have a great memory, but as I repeated its words, trying to commit them to memory, God has ministered to me far more through this psalm than any ministry I offered through reading it. It is a psalm of great confidence in God, a confidence I don't always have. And as I've reflected on its words, it's led me to ask lots of questions. I've wrestled with how these words fit with the contexts I found myself over the last few months. So this morning, I don't bring neat and easy answers, but I bring to you my own wrestling with the questions, the experiences, and with my faith that God does speak through his word. So will you join me on this journey? with the questions of where, what, and when. Where does our help come from? What kind of help is it? And when can we expect it? Shall we pray? Lord God, we thank you for this amazing Psalm. And we pray that you would speak to us through it this morning. That as we study your word, you would lift our eyes and stir faith in our hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, firstly, our psalm opens with a curious statement and a question. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? Now, I've come for a walk up our biggest hill in Surrey, Leith Hill. Unfortunately, it, there's not much of a view today because of the clouds. And I'm not quite sure what help I could find other than maybe a takeaway coffee from the Leith Hill Tower. But what is our psalmist getting at by lifting their eyes to the hills? Now this psalm is one of the psalms of ascent, so it was probably said on the pilgrimage to Jerusalem. So it could be, the mountains could be referring to Mount Zion, a place of refuge and worship. Or they could be the mountains surrounding the path that these pilgrims are walking along. So they could pose a danger of robbers hiding in the mountains. 
It's interesting um, what associations we have with mountains. I chatted with Alex earlier this week and he talked about um, how in Rio the mountains were where the favelas were found and so they could be dangerous places where gangs could be found. But for me, mountains are my place of refuge. They're a place that remind me of holidays and times of rest. In fact, um, this time last year, I led a retreat in the Brecon Beacons with some friends from college. And one of those friends filmed this experience. And so I wanted to share this film with you um, as you hear the psalm again. And as you watch it and as you listen, you might like to imagine how these words speak both to the beautiful mountains of South Wales with friends, but also to the pilgrims walking towards Jerusalem and perhaps to the favelas of Rio and to the COVID wards of the hospitals. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forevermore. Whether the mountains represent a refuge or a threat, or even just something really big, the point the psalmist is making is that we need to look beyond the mountains to something bigger and better beyond these huge mountains, in fact, beyond the whole universe. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Whatever mountains we may feel threatened by at the moment that are causing us fear, the implications of this pandemic on our lives, we are called to look beyond the mountains. And whatever mountains we are taking refuge in, perhaps even good things that we cling to. We are called to look beyond the mountains. In answer to our first question, where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The second question is what kind of help is it? The next verses show a vigilant, attentive, compassionate watchfulness. He will not let your foot slip. Anyone who's been for a walk or a run in Denby's recently will know the danger of foot slipping. So much mud. And our pilgrims who sang this song as they walked towards Jerusalem, their footing was important and God would see them safely to their destination. However, the phrase should also be taken metaphorically in wisdom literature, the path stands for life's journey. Here, the psalmist is certain that God will give them sure footing in this path of life. We then see the attentiveness of God's watching in the second half of verse 3. He who watches over you will not slumber. And then in verse 4, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Now I've not had a newborn baby, but I've chatted to enough friends who have and babysat for a few of them to know the attentiveness that keeps a new par parent awake at night. Aware of every murmur, every toss, every turn, every whimper and every cry. Now this is only a fraction of the attentiveness with which God watches over us. 
And perhaps this morning, you just need to be reminded that God sees you. The psalmist could also be alluding to the encounter that Elijah had with the prophets of Baal, when Baal failed to light the fire on top of Mount Carmel. Elijah questioned the priests, saying, maybe he is sleeping and must be awakened. Not so with the Lord. When Elijah called, he sent down fire to burn up the sacrifice, as well as the wood and the stones, the soil and the water in the trench. The Lord who is awake, who neither slumbers nor sleeps, who is an ever-present help in trouble. In the next picture, we get God's help described with the metaphor of shade, protecting his people from the harsh and harmful effects of the sun. Now in this country, the sun is usually seen positively, especially at this time of year when we're longing for sunnier days. But for the pilgrims walking through the ancient Near East, the sun could be pretty dangerous. The one time I experienced this was on a trip to um, Israel six years ago. And we'd traveled southeast from Jerusalem towards the Dead Sea. But before we got there, we uh, stopped in Masada. When we got out of the bus, the temperature was 42 degrees Celsius. Now, most of our group were, uh, were very sensible and decided to take the cable car up mount the mountain to see the Fort Masada. But myself and three of my friends decided that we would take the scenic route up the snake path to Masada. I have never longed for shade as much as walking up that snake path. By the time we'd made it up this winding path to the very top, we were, um, we were exhausted. We'd, we'd drunk all the water in our bottles and probably sweated most of it out. And um, we had no interest in exploring the fort. We just wanted to sit in the shade. For God's help to be described as shade shows protection, safety, comfort and relief for his people. Perhaps this week you have metaphorically been walking in the midday sun and you just need the comfort, the shelter, the shade that God provides. The image of the sun is then poetically mirrored with nor the moon by night. Now this is not suggesting that the moon itself can be harmful, but rather that God's protection is 24-7 from the dangers of night as much as the dangers of the day. His help is constant. And in verse seven, we're given a summary of the help given. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. Now, if I'm honest, I have wrestled with this, not least as I read it out loud in a place where there was suffering. I am still asking questions. What does this promise mean? Can we expect a harm-free life? How does it fit with other scriptures that warn us about facing trouble in this life? I find it helpful here to look ahead to the New Testament and recognize that God's protection and love are bigger than we can imagine. If we look at Romans, we hear Paul, who experienced much suffering in his life, asking a rhetorical question and then answering it. Who can separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. In these verses, we're not told that the obstacles are taken away, but we're told that God's love is more powerful and more present than any of them. Unlike our psalmist, we live in the knowledge of the life, death and resurrection of Jesus, where God's help and love for the world is demonstrated so clearly. 
At Christmas, we celebrated the way that love led God, not just to watch attentively, but to enter our world, taking on our frail humanity. As we look towards Good Friday and Easter in the coming months, we know that Jesus did not turn away from suffering, but entered into it as he died on the cross for our sins. And then through his glorious resurrection, death has lost its sting. As we put our trust in Jesus, we are united with him. His death becomes ours, and therefore our lives become his. We can say, as Paul did, nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So if we go back to our psalm and the promise, the Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The life Christ has given us is about our whole living person. It is fullness of life. It is a forgiven life. It is a life of relationship with God, and it is eternal. Although our pilgrimage and our journey through life on earth is not always easy, we can hear the assurance of Jesus in John 16, verse 33. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Our third and final question is when will we experience God's help? We see the all-encompassing nature of God's help in the final verse of our psalm. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forevermore. The words coming and going encompass everything, whether you're setting out on your pilgrimage or coming home, whether you're locked up in your house or needing to go out to the shops or to work or to care for a loved one whether you're coming into life on earth or going out from it. And this help from the Lord is both now in the present and forevermore. In this psalm, we've seen God's help in the present, in the way he watches every footstep, stays awake through the night and provides shade from the sun. But we've also seen that his help goes on eternally in the fullness of the word life, and in the word evermore. So thank you for joining me on this journey of questions prompted by Psalm 121. From its opening question, where does my help come from? Starting where the individual is right now, looking up at the mountains surrounding them, whether fearing their threat or looking to their refuge, but finding that help comes from way beyond, from the maker of heaven and earth. And as we explored my second question, what kind of help can we expect? We were given images that describe a vigilant, attentive and compassionate watchfulness. The Lord's present in every footstep, awake through the watches of the night and a shade from the dangerous heat of the sun. This help is for our whole living person. That although we may face difficulties, they cannot separate us from God's love for us in Christ. And then we got to our final question of when might we expect that help? And we hear that God's help is there for us in all our activities, in the present and in the future. In the hospital ward, I did experience the loving presence of God. Sometimes it is a felt experience and sometimes it's not but we need only to lift our eyes beyond the mountains to the cross of Calvary to know the power of that love. The place where the maker of heaven and earth bowed his head as he brought the help that we needed most. New life, a forgiven life, a life in relationship with God, a life of faith, hope, and love, and an eternal life. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Amen. Becky, thank you so much for your word. That, that's really challenging and, and really struck a chord with me, I think. Mm -hmm. um, 
I wonder if we could just respond in in prayer, if that would be right. Yeah, absolutely. Well, shall we, let's pray together. Just really struck by um, what Becky said. Um, And I think this morning, God calls us to, to come to him. To come to him. And maybe it resonates with you, that idea that you have, you just feel surrounded by mountains where um, there is threat and there is danger all around you. There is no relief or respite. Or it might be that you look to something um, like a mountain to cling on to, some comfort that you have that you cling with white knuckles not to let go of. And God says, come to me. Me, I who am greater than the mountains, greater than your fears or greater than the things that you hide in. Maybe you just have that deep longing um, to have relief, to find shelter in God, just to rest in him, to have some respite. And God says, come to me this morning. Or it might be that you just need to know that God sees you, that he hasn't lost sight of you, and that you're not forgotten, that you're not alone. So shall we pray? Father, thank you that you are the source of all being and all of our life. You are the light that guides us. You are the joy that comforts us. And so we pray, come Holy Spirit. Come, Spirit of God, and meet our deepest needs. Help us to surrender and give up to you the things that we cling to, to find comfort other than you. May you be our comfort and our joy. Lord, fill us with your joy this morning. And Lord, for those of us who have chosen not to 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 follow you till now. Lord, give us that gift of faith that we might really know you in our hearts. Lord, forgive us when we have looked in other directions or gone other ways to find peace and comfort in our life. Jesus, we look to you now and ask that you would come into our lives. Come and make your home with us. And give us that gift of your Holy Spirit to be our comforter and our counsellor and our guide. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Till I lay my head I will see of the goodness of God
your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. If my life laid down, surrender now, I'll give you everything. Cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me. It's running after me with my life laid down I'm surrendered now I'll give you everything Cause your goodness is running after It's running after me Oh my life you have been faithful Oh my life you have been so so good with every breath Of the goodness of God, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. As we heard earlier about Alpha, there's an opportunity still to sign up for that. So do um, email us at support at paulsdorking.org.uk if you'd like to come we'll be kicking off our alpha course on the 24th of january which is really soon now and just a reminder that if there is anything we can do to support you through this time give you um uh any practical help any spiritual help uh, please be in touch and if you've got capacity or you've got a bit of space in your diary where you would like to help uh, others in the church and in the community please do be in touch um, for either of those at support at supportsdorking.org.uk. Brilliant. Shall we just, as we come to the end of our service, just reflect on those last words um, of the psalm. Mm. The Lord will watch over your coming and going now and forevermore. Lord, we thank you for your watchfulness, that you watch over us. And we just pray as we go into this week, we would know you caring and providing and helping us as we come in and go out both now and forevermore. Amen. Mm. Mm. Amen. And as we go into the week of final blessing, and maybe you might want to both imagine yourself sitting before God, um, but why don't you also bring somebody who you love, um, who needs God's blessing and comfort and reassurance now, why don't you visualise them sitting next to you? So may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those who you love now and forever. Amen. Amen. So go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of, the name Christ. of Christ. Amen. 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 Becky, love leading with you. Have a yeah. great week. Thank you. You too. God bless you and all of you. Have a great week. Bye. Bye.